Welcome to another great episode of the DCL Podcast. Today, I have Nevin and Ben. I'm going to let my guests introduce themselves. What's good? My name is Nevin Mitrovic. What's up? I'm Ben McLaughlin, freshman here at ISU. All right. And today, we're going to be breaking down confidence, self-discipline, consistency, and lifting. And we're going to get right into it. So... Um, I remember back in the day, I used to do wrestling in high school. Um, I noticed that I really didn't have the upper body strength for wrestling for my weight class. So I ended up getting into uh, lifting. I had to I had to put on size real quick, you know what I mean, in high school. So that's really what got me lifting. What made you get into lifting? Well, for me, I I also was a wrestler. Um, So I I got started into lifting when it was basically the end of COVID. Gym started to open up. There wasn't really anything to do. So my dad was just like, you guys aren't doing anything to me and my brother. You guys should go do something. We got a gym membership, started going. going Get out the house. (laughs) Yeah, get out the house, for real. And uh, yeah, just stuck with me, kept doing it. Yeah. For me, it was like, and going into high school, I wanted to get bigger for football. So my brother started taking me to the gym and- Honestly, after that, like, it just became a habit. Fell in love with it. Couldn't stop. And, like, even after stopping football after high school, it's it's still, like, something I love to this day. All right. And we know confidence plays a big role in personal growth. So um, when you believe in yourself and your abilities and what you can do, you are more likely to set and achieve goals, take on challenges, and step outside of your comfort zone and do things that you never thought you could have done. Um, So I want to talk about you guys out um, what role does confidence play in your personal life and or in the gym? For personal life and gym, it just, I mean, it's its the whole thing. You have to have confidence in yourself. You have to be sure of yourself when you're in the gym or when you're doing anything in life, when you, like, have a job or anything. Like, confidence is key. Like, and, damn, I just stuttered. <laughs> nah, you good, you good. Nah, I definitely get that, bro. Confidence is key. Confidence gives you that. It, it's it's you believing in yourself and your abilities and what you can do and what you can achieve and just going out and doing it. Uh, confidence is not easy for everyone to um, just build. You know, and a lot of people don't know where to start or a lot of people are looking for ways to uh, build confidence. So um, what are some strategies for building confidence, whether that be in the gym or your personal life? I say just, you know, getting out there and going to do it uh, gets you far, you know, going to the gym improving there doing it every day it's a little wins you know getting educated read books you know stay in school go to class do your homework stay on your schedule stuff like that yeah definitely those those little wins add up and even if they're l's you learn them from your l's but those little wins are what build your confidence because once you get that one win then it, it's just so much easier to keep on doing it because you know you can win exactly And I think another thing that plays a role in, like, building your own confidence is, like, staying in your lane. Like, stop worrying about other people's cards and wishing you had other people's, like, abilities or anything. Just find your passion, find your niche, and, like, stick to it, stay disciplined to it. And you're going to become, like, just a beast in that. Like, nobody can tell you that you're not good at that. Nobody can tell you that your skills aren't good enough in that, whatever you want to do. Definitely, definitely. And um, so there's a big misconception between arrogance and confidence. Um, Arrogance is you thinking that you're better than everyone, belittling others. Confidence, in my opinion, is more of just a positive self-belief about yourself and what you can achieve. And also confidence is knowing that you're not perfect and, you know, you can make mistakes too. Um, Confidence is just knowing that you will make those mistakes and you will become better off those mistakes. So I wanted to ask you guys, um, in your opinion, what is the difference between arrogance and confidence? Um, I would say arrogance is like, it's like, like overcompensation for like things, you know, you lack. So you're like big mouthing, like your skills. So people don't know that you lack what you lack or like, Mm -hmm. like it stems from like insecurities. I feel like more Mm -hmm. so while confidence is like, you you know you're just like confident in your skills. You know you got it just because you all that practice, all all those days that you were disciplined enough. I feel like that's the difference. Yeah, and that's definitely deep. But confidence is genuine, right. and arrogance is it's not. It's fake. Right. It's not real. You gotta stay humble. Right. 
Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. So um, how does a lack of confidence impact our decision making and overall well-being? Like you said, like confidence is being sure in your skills, sure in yourself. So like if you're not sure in yourself, then you're going to second guess like most of your moves, like whether you're in the gym, whether you're in like just in your personal life, just anywhere, you're going to second guess yourself. You're not going to think maybe I'm not good enough or anything like that. But that's because you're worrying about what other people are thinking about you instead of just worrying about yourself. When you have a lack of confidence, you don't believe in yourself and you might have a negative self-image. So you don't believe in your abilities to be able to go out and to achieve that. Or you might uh, fear mistakes, You, but in actual reality, mistakes are what takes us to that next step because we learn more from our mistakes than our successes uh, most of the time. So, uh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, how do you guys set, stay self-disciplined and consistent in your life? Uh, definitely, uh, you got to have the self-intrinsic motivation to go out and go to do, do the things you need to do, go to the gym. But also definitely having a partner in that uh, definitely motivates you and makes you want to go to the gym. Like first semester, some days I wouldn't want to go to the gym, Ben wouldn't want to go to the gym, but... We would have to motivate each other to go and go do those things. Yeah, I totally agree. Like last semester, it was like more so like sometimes I wouldn't want to go to the gym. And like when I didn't want to, I actually didn't. And like someone like him would like motivate me to go. But like now it's like it's become a habit where whereas like if I don't go to the gym, like my whole day feels like off or like I feel disoriented. So it's like if I don't go to the gym it, or like I – even if I don't feel like I want to go to gym, I know I have to because, I mean, like, I'm not going to gain anything by not going. So Definitely. And by creating those habits, that's how you do it. If you can create a daily routine of this is what I got to do. I wake up at this time. I go to the gym at this time. I study for two hours a day or, or whatever. I'm going to cook this time. If you set that routine, set that schedule for yourself that's how you that's how you can stay self-disciplined because you know what you got to do. You got to schedule and you got to follow that. And that's the definition of discipline is getting the stuff that you got to get done, done, get it out the way right. and get moving. Definitely, definitely. Um, so honestly, um, I mean, it's not easy to always be self-disciplined. So let's talk about the challenges that people face when they're trying to be uh, self-disciplined and consistent in their work. Uh, I mean, for me, even like I'm I'm not perfect, like sometimes like those little bad habits, those little side bad habits might get in the way of you getting your everyday like things that you have to get done. But like, I mean, it's going to take a while to like, I mean, of course, throw away those bad habits, just like how hard it was to build the good habits. But you just have to keep just have to keep trying, keep getting closer to the right direction each day and not get like too down on yourself about it for real. Mm. All right. Well, let, me, let me pick on that, though. Um, you going through you got multiple days that um, are, you're just taking L's. You're um, you're an entrepreneur and you're not getting any sales right. or you're in school and you're not seeing any progress on your schoolwork. So right. uh, how do you keep going after after taking L's day by day by day? Like, how, you know, how, how can you keep persistent through that? I think at those situations, you have to know, like, you're you can only get better right now. Like you, you've already made those mistakes. You're already at your lowest. Now you have to see, like, you have to reflect, like, what do, what do I have to do to change? What do I have to do to, like, actually build on what I'm doing right now? Like, maybe it's going to reach out to a teacher. Maybe it's like trying a different business strategy, or trying like a different split in the gym. Like whatever it is, you just have to keep going. Because I mean, if you stop, then I mean, look, what was the point? Like you're you're not getting anything from stopping. So. And like you said, all about about the hardships. You know, you got to go through that, and you got to take those frustrations that uh, life throws at you, and you got to you got to take it head on, and go to the gym, take it out on the gym, know that you're getting better, and just keep doing it day by day. How does self awareness and self reflection contribute to developing self discipline and consistency? Um, I think it plays like a big role because, like I just said before. You have to be able to like reflect on yourself and like know what you're doing right, right, wrong. Reflect on your plan and stick to it. I mean, you have to be able to know like is what I'm doing like right now positive for me. 
you have to be mindful in those like in those situations definitely definitely and um i think that just ties into knowing who you are if you are self reflecting within yourself then you're just building that self awareness and you're learning who you are how you react to certain situations um what's the best uh what's the best course for you what um what makes you feel good what makes you feel bad knowing yourself is best because everyone's different and you can't do what you see everyone else do because he doing it or because she doing it because just because they doing it doesn't mean it's going to work for you so um definitely self reflection allows you to actually identify um who you are um beliefs that are limiting you such as um you might think that you can't do it you might think that you don't look good enough for that girl you might think that you can't lift that weight but in all actual reality you can you can if you set out to do it and if you believe in yourself to do so yeah like with what you just said i think that plays a it's a big role like people are far too like concerned with other people's timetables with what's going on in other people's lives or comparing themselves to other people like when they should really just be focused on their story playing their cards right not worrying about what like traits other people have just focus on you and like what are your positives and how you can build on those i think that plays a big role in that definitely definitely um how can accountability and external support systems like you know coaches or or brothers family uh friends like you two in the gym how do you to help with maintaining self discipline and consistency i think like that like is it's very important in in like maintaining self discipline because i feel like it's is you can build self discipline and habits on your own but with the help of coaches especially as a younger person it's going to like definitely build you faster like give you the right like plan the right map so you can actually do what you want to do right yeah definitely to add on to that um a lot of people might look at coaches like um they i mean coaches are just not given the credit that they should because these coaches are actually setting the foundation for how that um student or how that athlete develops like that coach is very important if the coach is if the coach don't believe in you you know what i mean you're probably not going to go that far but having a coach that believes in you having a mentor that invest in you having a friend that cares about you that's really big because they they're going to help you on your journey cuz they're someone that actually cares about your self interest where you're going in life and they know that by you going far and by them helping you that's going to help them because it's developing them and who they are as a character and it's also uh it's also making your your network and the people that you're around better and that's what I'm all about I'm all about uh helping my friends out helping my family um making sure that we can all succeed in that um I mean if I have something then if I have a resource that you need then I'm going to pass it along if I see someone that's lacking I'm going to tell them hey you need to get up and go to the gym you need to do your schoolwork you 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 need to have some confidence in yourself so yeah definitely having having someone that um you know what I mean holds you accountable or having someone that cares about you definitely helps in life yeah. having a support system is like always important I feel like your connections dang near build you they make you like yeah you can build that self confidence you can build those self discipline but it's like with other people like you're the ones that you love the most the ones that you value the most instilling th- that confidence in you instilling those like skills in you like teaching you things that's what like actually builds you how can we overcome self doubt fear or failure i mean maybe i can't like say like i'm perfect in this or anything but i know that I've came a long way from what I used to be and that's all that matters. Just because somebody else can do it without fear doesn't mean it you should get down on yourself about like not being able to do something without fear. I think you just have to go head on each day go at it differently. Practice, just keep practicing until it's second nature, until it's until it doesn't gives you give you that anxiety that it used to. Cuz that that's all that matters as long as you keep getting better from where you were. That's all that matters, I think. It definitely helps when you're on the journey to overcome uh fear, failure, uh whatever that may be, um and you want to have self-confidence, you want to be disciplined, you want to be consistent, then it's best to actually identify um what causes these negative reactions. 
what gives me that feel that feeling of uh, failure? What gives me that feeling of self doubt? And most of the time, it comes from mental barriers. It's nothing physical. It's nothing that's in the real world. It's just a mental barrier that you've placed upon yourself because um, in the past, things haven't went the way you you thought they were going to go and you took it too hard and you let it actually take a toll on um, your self-perception and how you perceive yourself. But if you can go deep within and change the way you perceive yourself and you can change the way that you think about things and especially um, take, taking a lot of failures. People people look at that like, like it's bad, and it's not even bad. That's good. So if you can go deep inside and, and reroute your mental and how you think about yourself and how you perceive yourself, that's how you can overcome those barriers. That's facts. Because like, I feel like a, especially this day and age, a lot of people that are younger like like put themselves like on a timetable and like doubt themselves because they're not somewhere right now when you're only, what, 18, 20, 19 or however however old mm-hmm. you are and i think that just shows that like too many people are worried about like i said before other people's like situations and timetables but for, like if you just stay in your lane and focus on like he said like focus on like what gives you the, that fear and like try to change your thoughts about that like day after day then it's just gonna get better it's only gonna go up yeah it's never too late it's never too late. I don't care if you're 40. You can make changes to your life and you can be happy. Um, also, yeah, someone else's vision of success or someone else's vision or wherever they're at, that's not you. Right. Don't compare yourself to them. And we're in a day and age where social media is going crazy. Social media has us comparing ourselves to everyone. They got regular people comparing themselves to Drake. Right. <laughs> you got people right. mad because... They don't got a fucking Bugatti like Drake. Nah, you're not Drake. You guys are different. Right. You're your own individual, and that's what's special about you. I mean, like, you have your own traits that is, like, unique to you. So, like, I mean, for, I mean, not forget them like other people, but, like, mm-hmm. forget them. It's you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, definitely. Just stay stay in your own lane. Stay, in, like, like he said, just be on your own lane. You got... You got something else going for you. You got a different vision. And best believe the the if you can go internally and figure out what you really want in life and, and go achieve that, you're going to be happier than someone else's definition of success.